This video is going to cover creating Devise user accounts and giving them roles. You're going to have your default role, your moderator role, and your admin role. We're using Rails 7 for this on the Ruby 3.0.3 build because there's a bug currently with 3.1. So let's go ahead and let's get started. The first thing we'll do is we'll add Devise to our application. So I'll just say bundle add Devise, which will add it to our gem file. After we have device added to our gem file, we can then run a rails g device colon install command. Make this a little bit bigger. That will install device. We can then do a rails g device user command. And we'll give the users a role of type integer. So if I full screen this real quick, you can see that the command is rails g device user role colon integer. Go ahead and we'll run that and we can exit full screen. Next, let's come into our DB inside of our folder, our migrate, and we'll come into the device migration. Now, a lot of this stuff should look familiar, but down here we'll see our t.integer role and we'll just give this a default value of zero. And this is just so that it's always set to what our default role will be, which will be zero. The next thing we can do is we can come over here and just do a rails db colon migrate command so that we don't forget. And then we'll do a rails g controller pages and we'll give it a home page. And that's just so we have something to test with. Next, let's come over to our config and our routes.rb. And here we want to change this git to a root and this slash to a hash. We'll save that. Next, we can go ahead and start our Rails server with the Rails S command and hopefully see something on our homepage, which we do. Now, let's come over to our app, views, pages, and our homepage, and let's create some conditional logic here. Start with a if current user. So if our user is currently logged in, we want to show them something. For this, uh, I guess I'm having some GitHub Copilot autocomplete, so let me full screen. So it's suggesting autocompleting with this, which sure, I'll hit tab for this. So we're just gonna say hello current user dot name, which we don't have. We'll change this to user dot email because it comes with an email by default. You've successfully authenticated with your device account. You are now ready to interact with this application. So that's neat, sure, whatever. Next, we'll do the else statement, and then we'll see what else is here. Uh, and it looks like it's trying to do a basic href for this. So we'll just, uh, let's leave the you are not signed in and we'll clean that up in a second here. We don't want this and we don't need it in a P tag. Instead, what I'll do is I'll say link to sign up. And this will be the new user registration path. Then I'll say, uh, if you have already s signed up before, we'll do a link to sign, or maybe let's do login, just so that it reads a bit differently. And we'll say new user session path for that one. Now we can go ahead and save that. We'll move it over and then we'll uh, refresh this page. You can see here, uh, you are not signed in, so we can either sign up or we can log in. And we can, of course, add in like a BR tag here for a bit of readability. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's click sign up. Now here it's gonna ask for an email and a password. So I'll do dean at example.com with a password of password. And this won't work because we haven't set the turbo links to ignore this yet. So we'll get an error, which is fine. So here you can see it says no method error in device, registrations, controller, create, user URL. Uh, the easiest fix for this, there's a couple, but I think the cleanest, as far as I can tell, is to stop the server, do a rails g device colon views command, which will generate the views for device. You can then come over to our app views and we should see a device folder appear. We can open that. And we want to come into our registrations, our new. And we're going to do this if we have any pages that require it. So the edit registrations might require it or sessions. We'll see as the video continues. Uh, but for the submit right here, 
I just want to say uh, a after we submit or when we click submit, I want the data to be turbo false. So this is just adding some additional data where we tell turbo links, please behave yourself. Let me do what I want to because turbo links is a bully. We can save this. And this will work for our sessions, but not for, or no, this will work for our registrations, but not for our sessions. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary for sessions, but we might as well just add it in here as well. So I'll say data turbo false. Uh, better safe than sorry a couple weeks from now when this doesn't work and you have to Google the entire problem all over again. Now I'll go ahead and I'll type Rails S to start the server again. I will go back to the home page and then I'll hit sign up. I'll do dean at example.com with a password of password. Hopefully I typed that right. Uh, the email was already taken. So that means that when we signed up the first time, it looks like it went through, but it didn't redirect us. That's fine. Let's just test it with another one. So I'll do test at case.com with a password of password. And that looks good. Hello, test at case.com. You've successfully authenticated. You're now ready to interact with the application, blah, 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 blah. Let's go back to our homepage. Uh, this is fine, but I would like to be able to sign out now. Uh, so after this P tag here, let's just do another link to sign out. And this will be the destroy user session path. Make sure this is session and not registration. If it's registration, that'll be to delete your whole account. Session is just for your current session that's keeping you logged in. After this, we need to do a method delete, just like we would before. And I believe this no longer works unless I'm mistaken. So if I click sign out, it should tell me that the, yeah, there's a routing error for the get. So let's go back because we can't sign out with this anymore. And instead, I think what we need to do is in single quotes, and I'll full screen this and pump it up a bit just to make sure you can read this. We need to say, if I check my notes, data, oops, in single quotes, data turbo method, colon, colon, delete. I think that's, all it takes. So if now if I refresh and I click this, we log out and it tells us we're not signed in. So now we can log in. Let's try to log in as dean at example.com with our password of password. Looks like that works. So now what I would like to do is below the role or below the email, maybe we do a P tag and it just says, um, you are a, and then in square brackets, we'll do current user dot role, something like that. Let's give this a try and see what comes up. So here it says you are a zero. That's not zero out of 10. That's just um, <laughs> saying that you're the first, I guess. So this is our default role being printed here. Now, what I would like to do is convert this from a zero into something a bit more meaningful. So what we can do is we can come over to our models and our user.rb. And I'll go ahead and I'll full screen this. And let's just do this below our, uh, okay, let's just do this below our device. You can see GitHub Copilot is trying to be useful there. Uh, but again, it's not going to be stealing any jobs anytime soon with advice like that. Uh, let's start with an enum and roll. You can see here it's already suggesting this right here, which is from the device documentation. But we're going to change this a little bit. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll just type this manually. So our first one is going to be user, but our second is going to be moderator. And our third is going to be admin. And I think once I save this, if I come down here, it'll tell me to type this next, which it does. So here we want after initialize set default role if, uh, oops, if new record. And this is just 
after we create a uh, new account, it wants to set the default role. And here it's already suggesting the next method, but we'll go ahead and we'll type this out. So say set default role, self.role or equals user end. And that should be it. Now, if we come over here and we refresh, you can see that our role changed to a user. Now, what we could do, if I open up another tab and I say Rails C, in our Rails console, I can say at user equals user dot first, which is our dean at example.com. And here I can just say at user dot role equals one. And now let's do a at user dot save because we want to update this. And now if I refresh this page, my role is now a moderator. Or I can say at user dot role equals two at user dot save. And now we should be an admin. So maybe I want to come to the home page uh, because it's nice that we have this, but now I want to use this. Uh, and then I want to say, you know, maybe if current user dot admin. Now remember, this is uh, already inside of a if current user check. So I don't have to make sure that current user exists. If I put this up here, of course, I'm going to run into some issues because if I'm not logged in, this will be null. And then I'm trying to call a method on a null, which isn't going to work. But I can just do this in here for now. And I'll just say if I'm logged in, uh, I don't know, show me the uh, user dot count, maybe. I don't know, it's just something simple. There are blank, oops, users in the system. Cool, thank you, GitHub Copilot. It's a little bit weird to have you suggest text like that. On here, you can see you are a admin. There are two users in the system. So maybe I wanna add like a BR in here to, to break this. There we go. So you can see here how this is something where if I sign out now and I log in to test at case.com, which I think was our second user, uh, here it just says you are a user and we don't see this you are a, or there are now X users in the system text. So this is sort of how you can use roles here where maybe your moderators can see something and your admins can see something or only your admins can see something, but the users can't see any of it. Of course, you can extend this just like you would with a regular admin boolean. Hopefully this was helpful and I will see you in the next tutorial.